Hi, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. I just did a floss tube video, probably number 30, and there was so much that I wanted to share about the project bags and I didn't even share my haul as far as cross stitch. So I said, let me take a break and I'll come back. So this is part two. So in this one, I'm going to share with you about the haul because it's been about a month, maybe not a month. It's been weeks since I've done a video. So I've collected some things along the way and then I've gathered all this stuff that I have about the project bags that I do, not to do a tutorial because I'll reference there's awesome tutorials out there, but just to show you the details of the measurements and how I, the things that I put into constructing my bags, which I'm very happy with. So first let's do a haul so I can actually put all this away. And um, so we'll see how, I was gonna say this is gonna be a short one. I somehow never do short ones. But, um, and I have my new blinds, uh, so we won't be getting direct sunlight in, hopefully. So let's do this before it gets dark. And, um, I, I love, I, I have so many other floss tubers that I enjoy and some of them I have built relationships with outside of floss tube. And um, one, one of those sweet ladies is Christy from Daisy Case Primitives. And I was joking around on this one last video that I'm her groupie and anything she does that I want to do. She does a lot of stitching that I don't do, but she does a lot of stitching that I just have to get exactly what she gets because her style. I would say there's not a lot of us floss tubers out there that are as prim or primitive as some others. So that's why I, I love the things that Christy shares and how she does her colors and just some of the things that she does. So she had shared, I did I, no, I didn't print the color. Oh, and I only have the chart to show. Um, but it is one, it's called um, Pineapple Sampler by um, Mary Yoss of Gettysburg Homestead. Some of them, uh, because of the cost of, of color printing, some of them I would rather just look at, um, look at it on my iPad while I'm stitching it rather than use all that ink to do it. It's just the way I did it and I forgot that I was going to show you about it. So I got that. I love pineapples. I have collected pineapples and loved that whole hospitality symbolism and that from that colonial time. So the pineapple sampler I had to get it. So that was one thing I got. Then when I was on that site, so um, Gettysburg Homestead, I had never been there before. I, I think that's a really neat thing about learning about these Etsy shops. There are so many that are out there. I am loving now more than ever um, shopping small. So um, that's, that's what I love. But I do not have a lot of current decorations other than Christmas because I had done lots of country decorating before, had been part of that industry, and then when I got out of it, it was also the end of an era of that cutesy kind of stuff and country kind of stuff. So I got rid of a lot of stuff. But I do want to have little bits of um, decorations, especially Ginger Shawl is another one that I love looking at her Instagram and seeing how she decorates. And then Christy, Daisy Case Primitives, her Instagram page has a lot of, of um, vignettes and then um, so many others that I get inspired from. So I had seen she, there on um, Mary on the Gettysburg, Gettysburg Sam. Remember, I've already done an hour long video, so my brain is tired, but Gettysburg Homestead, she makes paper mache decorations and paints them out of old molds. And so there was quite a few Easter ones that I saw that I loved and I finally just bought one. So the PDF instant download was the one thing I got and I didn't have to pay shipping, but this was something else that I got. So this is just, of course, like if you're older like me, I don't know if they still have the quality, um, you know, the Easter chocolate ones. So the, the, the kind, they tasted like wax, but it was chocolate and they were cool. 
but this very much reminds me of stuff that we would have had um, as as candy that we would have eaten when I was a kid. So I love this. It actually does stand, but I will have it careful because it, it's such a narrow, it's top heavy, it's long. But this one was so beautiful, the details. And I try because I'm a food addict um, and chocolate is my biggest trigger. Um, usually that was probably the reason why I was thinking about not getting this because um, I don't, I fight, I will fight food all my life, fight eating food, but this was so gorgeous. Um, I will, I will engage in that chocolate fight to have this. So, um, beautiful and I'm, I'm going to take care of it. I'm not going to toss it on the floor because it is thin and delicate and I'm going to take care of it. So I was so pleased with finding a new Etsy shop. And then the other thing is my friend Jenny from Jenny Stitching Simple or Simply. I never, I, Jenny, you're Jenny to me. Um, so Jenny Stitching Simply, I'll, I'll put it in the links. But she had shared in one, one of her floss tubes, she has an Etsy site, not cross-stitch related. She is a jewelry maker, gorgeous jewelry. And so she has been part of Etsy and just shared the love of Etsy and just shared a lot about the concept of shopping small and um, supporting small businesses. And I love that concept. I've always loved small business, small businesses. And um, I, that's been a part of my life, almost all my life is some sort of small business. So I love that thought. And I love now thinking instead of maybe going on Amazon now, I look at Etsy first. And I went to buy a calendar from my redone office. The last time I got one on Amazon and I just, they didn't have what I wanted and I just bought it because I didn't feel like shopping anymore. This time I went on Etsy and I found just what I want. So it will be coming. But that's that concept of, of shopping small and especially with all the stuff that we buy, um, it's just neat to shop small when you can. So that's that was the fun thing about that. Then the other, the so these are my other parts of haul and then I will show the project bags. Um, traditional stitches. I had made an order in November and they ship and they let you know they ship it when they can get it. So one of the things that came in was legacy and it's very funny in that I have another piece of legacy that I got at a different die lot and it looks um, very different than this one but this legacy um, definitely has a lot more green in it. So it's it's interesting as you buy your linens because I'm new, I'm new to getting back into cross stitch and definitely new to um, linens. This since August of last year is when I was new to linen. So this one is much more green than my other piece, which was golder tone. But it will be fun to find something that is just right for this. So I'm very glad to have Legacy by Picture This Plus. And then there is another piece that I got from them and it kind of segues into something else. We are all, um, I think all stitchers, quilters, um, learning about the death of Barb Adams on 4th of July. For those of us who have loved Blackbird, whether it's fabric or quilt patterns, that's how I learned about them, fell in love with them at the beginning, are now cross stitch books. Um, just um, reeling in some way or another with the sadness of Barb's passing, sad on a lot of different levels. And I kind of shared about that in my last floss too. But I also decided that um, I didn't want to get in a madness of buying every blackbird that I had not bought. Um, I, I didn't want to dishonor her death, but I also felt that it honored it in a way to get some of those patterns that I had not purchased before because now they would be even more dear to me and I I hope that Alma still moves forward with Blackbird Designs. I, I'm not close with either of those ladies except that I love their work. So it I waited I waited until I, I wanted to make sure I was doing this for what I felt for me were the right reasons. This is for me. Um, because I don't need any more patterns and um, and I was going to slow down and I thought yes these are these are ones that I have been wanting and I just decided they're even more special to me now right now so in that I decided to go ahead and get ooh la la I've seen many people doing this 
and um, there was one pattern, one chart in here in particular that I wanted, but it was also in one of their quilt magazines or quilt pattern books um, weekend, but there were not a lot of other things that I wanted in that book. So I thought, mm, I can wait. Well, I decided to go ahead and get this and it was for this one, A Bit of Spring. I had originally seen this, someone turned it into a project bag and, um, and I've been wanting this for several months and that's where I just decided, let's just, let's just do it. This is because this is Bonnie who was trying to stop buying so much cross stitch stuff. That's why I'm explaining myself to y'all. Um, but there are many things in here that I really, um, really love this one as well. And if you look at this, um, this was something I believe my great grandmother made. It was needlepoint that or my grandmother, but this would be my rendition of doing that. And so I was just collecting that one is made with gingerbread and I have a very small piece of um, gingerbread by picture this plus that would work for that and then the neat thing was as I was looking that at um, a bit of spring this pattern um, it uses something else that I just got in I have vintage light exemplar I have a piece of exemplar vintage exemplar and I love it and I just stitched something on it but I I got vintage light exemplar and it was um, it was an 18 by 27 piece oh this is to me this is just luscious it is a beautiful it has a bit of the mulberry plum tone to it lighter of course than the exemplar but it is it is a delicious um, piece of linen so because it's a larger one I will treasure it but um, that's that light there. Anyway, I was pleased to see that even though I had ordered it in November, so what's that? What, I don't know when I ordered it in November, but about seven months ago, seven, eight months ago, it just came in this month and then that book goes with it. So I will treasure that. And um, so that, that was one of the pieces of haul that I got. And then this, I wasn't going to share this because everybody had purchased it and I had purchased it and I just thought, and it, it was one that I had ordered because I knew that the blackbirds, once they're gone, they're hard to get. And this is what I truly, truly want. I've seen other stitchers, Celeste from Celeste Creates just finished this one and now I want to do that too. And then others have finished this one. I would not do it on the gray background. Um, I would do it on a different background, but this was one that I had ordered when I went to visit my dad in Colorado. I had ordered it there. It was lost in Colorado um, for over a week and got there the day after I left. And so then it had to get rerouted to me. So it was just by the time I got it, I just thought, you know, it's been so late, but again, a treasured one, um, even more so now. And then I have a couple more individual charts that are coming in, ones that I have really particularly wanted for a certain reason, but I thought, oh, I've got another pattern similar to that and I haven't even stitched it so that's why I just decided this is the time to get it so other things that I have purchased so I have this bag here now I am finding that um, I don't want to go crazy collecting scissors because I don't I, I have enough collections but I'm realizing you need lots of scissors because sometimes they'll get in a project bag and then I was sitting I was up at the cabin stitching and it was like, where's all my scissors? It was crazy. So I thought, okay. So I ended up trying and I got just to, just because I'm spending money on quilt stuff now, I thought I'm just going to go cheap. So I bought this DMC scissors and I got, um, you know, they probably were not more than $5. Now the sun is coming in, but they're beautiful. I think it's the peacock one and it's just in the gold. They're just not my favorite. I love, I'm a ginger girl. I love my gingers. And I thought, well, why see it? Oh, it doesn't, it's not as smooth as butter as my gingers. Um, and I thought, why do I keep buying inexpensive scissors when I can just spend about $20 or so and get a pair of gingers, another pair that I might want. 
and have those with me. So that's why I decided enough of the inexpensive scissors. These will do the job, but they don't feel beautiful in my hands. Um, maybe they will in time, but that was just my decision is just going to buy because I've ginger was what I got when I first learned how to sew. And so I've always been very comfortable with gingers. Um, so that's, that's why I got the gingers. Okay. Now another pattern that I had ordered, gosh, this came in, this came in, I think at the middle of June. Um, but again, I was doing my, or the beginning of June, I was doing my wool and then my wool along videos. And so I thought I'll share when I get into a floss tube. So here we go. This one, again, Christy at Daisy Case Primitives had finished this one. This is on Ale. And um, and I just, I had been wanting it. And so what I'm really trying to do is not um, not do the pause and buy. I've done enough of that. And I, I've got them all over the my room here. I'm trying to be really purposeful and really think about it. Do I really need this? Do I really, of course I want it, but because I was sharing that I get, I'm getting kind of anxiety from having all these charts and supplies that I'm not using because I have many different hobbies. And I thought, okay, I've wanted this for months, so I just got it, and then I got enough of the, I think it's tarnished gold. And I'm just gathering, oh, I did have a few more. I'm gathering some of the other threads, the rhubarb and the baby spinach along the way. And I already have that piece of linen too. So I thought, okay, that's good. So I'm trying to get myself under control. There, there will never be complete control ever in my life, but I'm working at it. So that was another um, haul that I had. And then um, I, I had shared on my last floss tube um, the one that I just did, that there was a blackbird um, Christmas cactus and I needed olive and nothing that I had in my stash quite worked because I keep thinking, I don't need all these flosses. I've got tons of greens. Well, I needed that olive because there was that contrast that I wanted. So I bought an olive and then I went to do something else and I thought, I need olive and I don't know where that olive is. I forgot where I had put it. So um, I am trying to gather some more flosses that I will use. Um, and one of the other things that I am seeing is prices are going up in some areas. I have not seen it in the floss or the charts yet, but I definitely saw it when I went to buy um, some fabric at a box store. Um, I was like, whoa, that was $4.99 for that interfacing and now it's $6.99. So the other thing is I thought if prices accelerate and go above what I'm comfortable with, I've got enough. So am I really saving money in buying tons of stuff now that I will never use? It's my rationale. It works for me, but I am kind of gathering, gathering stuff. Okay. So, um, when I went to order that olive, I love shopping the Etsy, like I said, and I, I like um, Hollis Hands Creates. I'm just comfortable. I, I tend to go the same places. So I like the linens that she has, and then I can throw in some flosses and I get free shipping. And I like that. So I had shared on another floss tube that I really, really like hogs bristle. So hogs bristle has, um, oh, and I'm dealing with the light, but I, I didn't want to put the blinds down because it will be really dark. So even though I have my new blinds, we're still going to deal with the light issue. Um, hogs bristle. You can see a light modeling. Um, that tag is there. Light modeling, a, a, a tan, definitely a tan ecru type of a color and very much something that I love. So since I really only wanted one floss, I thought, well, what can I order more to get the free shipping? And so I thought, I like hogs bristle. I'll just order another one. Then I wanted to try a new linen. I see a lot of people stitching with up in the attic, fox and rabbit. Um, so hogs bristle, I think that's fox and rabbit as well. So this is another fox and rabbit. I wanted to try up in the attic. When I just look at it here, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful color, but it has more of, it's what I would call a nude. Back in the day, oh my gosh, 70s, my grandmother always wore nude um, nail polish, the color nude, and then there was the nude color of nylons. This looks like that nude color, kind of the pink tone, um, and it has a light modeling. I'm, 
I'm getting familiar with the different um, dyeing designers and so far what I have of Fox and Rabbit, it's gently modeled, which I really like. So now if I'm going to put them side by side, you can really see when I opened them up, they were side by side and I thought, oh my gosh, it's pink. Um, but it's only because it's right here with hog's bristle. So this one, beautiful on its own, um, just a little bit different. But obviously, like I like a lot of different colors and that that's just like what I see there. Um, so I'm, I'm now, because so many people are interested in this quilt, and I, I don't know if you're seeing the whole thing. Anyway, check in the show notes. I'm just copying and pasting that information um, about that quilt in the show notes. So that was that was a haul. And then some my threads have been dispersed. Um, some of them. This is that tarnished gold. That tarnished gold is lovely. This one um, is was a little bit less. I had three that I needed for that rocking horse one. And I ordered four because it's in so many things. So I took the three that matched the best. This one did not have as much of the dark in there. So tarnished gold is in a lot of things that I like. And then this one, pink sand, is in blackbirds. Um, so I like that pink sand because it's a little bit darker. I don't do bright pinks. Now, um, I'm I'm gathering and kitting up stuff for um, Christmas garden. A lot of a lot of stitchers have stitched that, and. Um, I'm trying to choose a background. I may just go with what's called for if it's even available, but it's more yellow than I would want. I did yellow in my house for about 10 years. I loved the whole candlelight look and I did light fixtures with a yellow globe, walls yellow, and I'm like over yellow right now. So I like the more gray hint or true brown hint in the tan. But, um, so that's why I may not use that yellowy background of what Christmas Garden is from Blackbird Designs. Um, but Christy Cross Hatch Quilts was showing her Christmas garden and she did it with this. So I just wanted to get a piece of it, just a small one, because it's a 28 count um, fog by Picture This Plus. And it is lighter and lightly modeled. It's beautiful. But I don't know that they have it 36. It seemed like it was only available in 28 and don't necessarily want to do 28 because I, I don't have a large house. So I was more interested in 36 to get that size down. But anyway, I like that I can get on one, two, three stitch. I do like that you can get the small pieces are usually about 325 for a small piece just so you can see that color and have it kind of like a tester. Is that all my haul? I think so. That's not bad. Okay. Um, so, oh, I know. Cause I do have some things on the way. Okay. So that's my haul and now I can disperse it. Cause that's what I like to do. I have, I, I have, as far as my life is not all organized, but I do like to have all my cross stitch stuff in little places because when I go to quilt, um, I have, because I have so much stuff now and because now I started the new hobby with cross stitch, my disorderly quilt room got more disorderly. So this last year or two, I've really been working at organization, having things where I want them. I'm looking right now up on baskets that are overflowing. That's why I'm looking. It's like, oh, you guys can't see it. Um, so I'm really working on order because when I feel like quilting, um, like I have a blackbird quilt that I want to work on the applique and I need to get access to all my fabric so I can audition and find just that right color. But I've shared before where now, because I have so much stuff and it's pretty much usually orderly, I have to pull out a cart that's in my closet and move it to put over in the doorway where I can, I can get in there. Um, I can get in and out of the doorway, but I have to have, a, and everything that I just showed on the last floss tube is on the floor. So I need a clear access. So I'm really working on order. Why did I even go there with what I was talking? Oh, I know because I want to get stuff put away. And I do um, this weekend want to put stuff together for that applique quilt that I really want to get finished. So now we're going to do the section on Bonnie's project bags. Okay. So I knew this wasn't be a short video. It's already 24 minutes. So now 
this is going to be where I just simply share with you how Riley's on the floor, so I have to be careful where, how I am choosing to make the project bags that I'm making. I'll refer to you to the places. Oh, let me grab one. Um, the people who have done videos that I have learned from. So the very first project bags that I made, um, well, the very first project bags I've shared about this, my mom and I use Ziploc bags and one that she has and I still use, she had drawn on it and wrote on it. So I still use that as a project bag. But then I progressed on to um, the vinyl bags and I found, and I'll, I'll link it, but also in my playlist. So if you go onto my channel and like under the video, you'll see Bonnie or no, you'll see Log Cabin Stitcher and it's like my picture. So you tap that and then it will take you to my channel and then it'll have like home videos, playlists. You tap playlists. I had to explain this to my cousin when I was talking to her the other day. You tap playlists and then it brings up all kinds of playlists, um, all different types of things. So that's where these are, these are the things that I like. And so I have one playlist on project bags and totes. The very first one that's on there is how I learned how to make these vinyl bags. And so these were the vinyl bags that I was making. Now, Jen, had her size on there. Riley's in the way. So let me grab, Riley, watch out. Um, where is that bag? Okay, so this is, this is the dimension of Jen's large project bag. And after I, I change everything up, I often do that to patterns. I'm not really doing that to cross stitch, which is surprising. Um, but I do that with just about everything else. There are very few quilts that I do exactly the way the pattern is. Kim Deal and Joe Morton are the only ones that I have done that with. And we'll see if I do that with the Blackbird one, but I change everything up according to what I want. So this was, this was the size that she had and notice the dimension here now. And this one, oh, that's not a good one to show because I was using up the fabric that I had. This is gonna be one of those videos. All right, so let's do this one. Okay, this one is the, this is the size that I developed that I like. So we've got a little bit taller. So it's an inch taller, but if you will notice, this is, this is wider. And so I will put, so I will just copy and paste from another another video that I've shared, I'll copy and paste my dimensions, not how to make them. So watch, watch Jen, Jen crafts or whatever, whatever it is, Jen, Jen crafts. Um, I'll just, I'll put that link there. But the other thing that I learned that I did, and this is where, this is, this is how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to show you the things that I did different. I wanted a stiffness in here. And so I simply use a scrap of vinyl and I just tuck it in there and that gives it a stiffness that I like. I like that firmness. So that way it doesn't get like this one is just softer. And, and I want that stiffness because I want it, I want it standing up there. So that's, that's what we've got. So what did I say? An inch higher. Um, it's open now, so that's not showing. And then I wanted to make them wider so that way I can pull, like this doesn't matter so much because it's in plastic, but when I have my books, I do not want them to rub on the edges because I am particular about my books. I always have been. I like them. I don't like them to get damaged. I like them perfect. So if we're to look at this, this one is also so one inch longer and then it's actually that same width apparently I was going to start making them a little bit wider too and I might just so I have plenty of room so I will put the measurements in there people have asked me about the vinyl that I use and the vinyl that I use is a 16 gauge vinyl I do get it at Joann's that's where I've gotten it before it's on a roll but what I had learned is that you want to look for the one with the yellow 
the yellow, um, it comes in a wrapper, and I try to keep it that way so it keeps it nice and not scratched. It's just the one wrapped in yellow, but it, it, it is a very thick, it is a thick gauge, which works for what I'm using. It helps give it that stiffness. The other thing, I think that's where, I think what Jen, it's been a long time since I watched her video, but on that, oh yes it is, because on this back, when on the inside of this, I use a fusible fleece. And a friend of mine had moved away and given me her whole roll of fusible fleece. And now, and I finished it. I've made so many project bags, I finished it off. And so I went to buy another roll. And at Joann's, I was not, I didn't find the, because there was, it, it's a thicker one than most. I didn't find that at Joann's, but I did when I went to Hobby Lobby. So at Hobby Lobby, I found, and I bought, I bought a lot of it because I know I'm going to make a lot of it so I it's the fusible fleece so it's fleece on one side and that rough that's the glue on the other side so that's the fusible fleece and it is Pelon T like Tom P like Peter 971 F like Frank fusible thermo thermo lamb thermo lamb plus all right I'm just gonna show it to you these are my notes um, that's it. Okay. If you want a screenshot. Okay. So these are some dimensions that are going to be coming up. I don't even know if that's going to work, but I will also put them in the show notes. Okay. So that's my secret. That's how I do my stuff. Okay. So that's the fusible fleece that I like many different kinds. And Elizabeth Ann can stitch has done another type of project bag and she even recommended the type that she uses, but it wasn't as thick as the one that I wanted to use. So obviously I have a thing about thickness. Um, so those are the vinyl bags. And I like to buy also, um, I get my zippers on Zip It Zippers from Etsy. I like, I don't like messing around with the tabs. So I buy the widest zippers that I can afford at that time. So instead of like the 14 inch, Ali, I think the last time I bought the 16, I was going to get the 18 and I thought, okay, save money and get the 16. But I, I don't like to mess around with too short of a zipper. So that's the other thing that I do. And I like to have a collection of zippers. Um, but I tend to do the more primitive ones and most of theirs are bright. So I just, I'm just picky. Um, but I, I like to match them. So that's the thing about the zippers. So I made many and some of them I like to use my mom's fabric up so this is something that she had I would never put that in a quilt that I would make but I am loving using some of her more wild um, fabrics to make my zipper bags so this one I think I made it as big as that piece of fabric so you can make them whatever size works for you I have a basket where I keep my bags. And so this is just the measurements that I choose to make. So a um, lot of options. And I think I even ran out of fabric and that's how, that's why this, this one is so narrow because it was like, it was gonna be gone. So those are my vinyl bags. And that's how I have chosen to do that. So just, just exactly like Jen did one one layer of fusible on the back. I do like the wraparound. I don't like the separate ones where I have to do the bind binding around the edge. I do like the kind where the backing, you wrap it around and it takes a little, oh man, the first couple that I did, I had to keep watching that video over and over. It's like, I don't get it. And so I've, I've kind of gotten it now. But the one thing, so the one thing I do not like, I like, this was wedged in tight enough where it did not bend. Obviously I have this issue. Um, but in the basket, when they sit in the basket, they can end up bending. And I thought, I'm tired of my project bags bending. I wanted to try something different. So, um, and you have to also be careful about if you have a pattern that the chart picture is on the vinyl, um, Carol Saltbox Stitcher showed that can adhere to the vinyl and you pull it off and that ink is stuck on that vinyl. So pros and cons to using vinyl. And I, I have shared before, I would not use like a tea dyed or coffee dyed fabric on the inside of these project bags. I'll use it on the outside, 
but I just want to be careful about what I use on the inside. And here's something else I had shared. When I did my last floss tube, I was saying that I don't generally buy fabric at Hobby Lobby not or, or a box store. Not because it's bad, it's just that I buy what I call quilt quality fabric and it's fabric that is a weave and a dye and a quality that will last for quilts that are like heirloom quilts. So that's what I have. That's what my mom had a lot of. She also mixed her fabric. So when I inherited her fabrics, I can't always tell is this, is this the quilt quality fabric or is this a lower quality? Um, so I keep mine separate because I had boxes and boxes of at what was at that time when I did crafts house of fabrics. I gave tons of them to my neighbor and now it's like, Oh, I could use those for project bags now because I won't put those in a quilt that I would want to last for a long time for a quilt that would be fun and a nice gift. Yes, I could do that. I just, I don't have, a, obviously I don't have much of that anymore. So moving on now, those were those. So those are the vinyl bags and obviously it's fun to do different things. Generally the backing I also do here, but I wanted to use up this fabric that was from my mom and because I have a log cabin this was just a fun one that I made so I'll change things up as I feel like it but I love matching I do love matching fabrics together I have a whole drawer in my closet of days that I've gone by and I was like oh these would match up so perfect maybe um, fabrics that I wouldn't use for a quilt necessarily but would be beautiful maybe a little bit more exciting um, or wild in a project bag. So I have, I have a lot of project bags I need to make. Now the next thing I wanted to do was a zipper. And because Celeste from Celeste Creates, I love her, and um, I thought I want to learn from a friend. And so I was nervous about doing a zipper for the first time. Even though I, I learned to sew when I was 16, I worked at a fabric store. I've sewn a lot of years in my life. Zippers were just not a part of that. Really, even though I made my own clothes for years in high school and beyond, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm old enough. I forgot how to do the zipper if I learned back then. Anyway, I watched her video. She has a great video. I'll link that too in this one. Oh, and she's also on my playlist. Um, so she showed how to do a zip top project bag. This is my floss tube project bag. So this was the dimensions that she showed. This was the fleece that I had that she showed. And this is stuff that I will be sharing in a quilt, in a quilt floss tube coming up. But I learned how to do that zipper and I liked it. The only thing I did not do, I didn't top stitch. So I did it exactly the way she showed it. And I just felt so victorious because I learned um, how to do a zipper and I felt comfortable doing that. So um, after I did that one, I thought, well, I'd like to take that and change it just like I do with everything. This is a book I constantly refer to, Stitched by Anila Hui. Now, she has something in here called um, the Big Zip. So she has a Big Zip pouch. So I thought, and it has a flange. So this, this zipper flange is just an added design element to that. And I thought, I want to learn how to do that. So I followed, this book is amazing. Every time I go to, I've made a lot of those, these bags. Every time I go to make it, I have to follow her steps. My brain doesn't work in the sense that I can remember. I, I get, I call it dyslexic, but I'm, I'm not dyslexic reading, but I feel very, uh, I don't know, whatever, vest, vestibular, kinesthetic. I don't know what it is. I get things backwards quite often. So all I do is I put that book out. I follow those directions. If it says, you know, exterior piece, wrong side up, I step by step by step. That's how I do it. And that's how I get the bags done. And so let's get that off there. So I also wanted to try some that were not vinyl, just for something different. And so the first one, following her directions, I believe this was the first one that I came up with and you can see it matches that zipper and I can get that zipper bag, that zipper vinyl or no, the vinyl bag 
it does have a zipper I can put in this one and it matches and I even figured out this was not in Anila's um, but I have trouble because the zipper I did it a little bit too tight so I, it was a learning process I have to open it I have to open it carefully I, I didn't want to redo it but I have to open it carefully because I didn't allow myself enough room on that zipper but I even figured out how to do a pocket on the interior um, that was extra I didn't do that um, or that wasn't in the pattern but I wanted I didn't like how the bottoms came out and so I wanted to do a boxed bottom and I did this after the fact I even have because I've talked about box bottoms before in my playlist I have a couple of different ones on learning how to do boxed bottoms so that this was one that I wanted and I have another basket that I keep all these in right under under you guys um, and so I like them being bigger because I can put my quilt or my applique or my wool projects in there and they are more roomy and so those were the ones that I was making then I wanted to try one I thought well this was the next one that I did and it still had the flange but I did a curved bottom um, just for something different and I've been working because this is the part that I don't like where because of that flange and because the tab was too far over and I have had um, I have had people email me and show me a picture of how they do it and basically the trick is you don't get that tab stuck in the seam so I've been playing around with how I can do that but I don't like how that kind of curves down on the edge I, I get picky but you know what that's why we do what we do because we want to be pleased with the result and so I really want to nail it I want to learn how to do these things but I did like the flange and I did like the tab because I liked how it gave it that extra element and then I had another one that I made and I've shared this before with leftovers from a quilt so I did a bigger boxed bottom it's wider and this was just leftovers from an old quilt that I had um, but it, it does have that flange on the top and I keep playing around and keep working um, but obviously I'm having a little issues with getting that tab and the flange so it doesn't curve down on the edge. Um, then this is my favorite one that I have so far. This is an, a, a retired pattern, but this is um, Cranberry Hill Studios. This is Meg Hockley. This is from a whole set that I got years ago, a gifted by my mom and my sister. I called them and I said, my birthday's coming up. Can you guys get this for me? Cause I can't afford it. And they did. Um, so it's been in the works forever. The whole, actually the whole thing is in here but we're sticking with the project bags so you can obviously take something I stitched this on I folded the edges under ironed it and then did the the blind stitch to get it down and this is an embroidery project and if you're interested in embroidery look on my playlist I have by that I have done some embroidery um, videos and then I'm trying to have different playlists with all these things that I like to talk about um, showing you experts that will show you things so um, I'm enjoying that and I love matching the colors and I love the joy of matching things up so um, usually I have this in the very front so this is the one that I see all the time so project bags um, th that size I really like and so I will put in the show notes because I I could tell you but it, I'll put it in the show notes the different sizes and I will call one my larger that's my quilt one the sizes of that and then the size of the smaller one which is more my cross stitch size so if you were to look at them side by side <laughs> Riley's down there remember okay side by side cross stitch quilt one this one, this one does have a boxed bottom, um, so, but not all of them do. So these are the two different sizes. So this I will call my quilt size, this I will call my cross stitch size, or small and large. They're not that much different, but this became less different because of the boxed bottom. Where's one that I didn't? Do I have boxed bottoms on all of them? Oh, no. Okay, so this is one that I shared on my floss tube. This is one, it's a pattern. I'm going to be doing this giveaway for this pattern 
on my next wool along video. I don't know when that will be, but just it would be like wool along number four. Um, this was given to me by Rosa. So this I did last month. This one is those dimensions, but without the box bottom. See, it goes, it goes just a little bit taller because the bottom's not taken up with that box bottom. Yet I can still get a lot of stuff in here. I actually have two projects in here. So I've decided I can skip the box bottoms. I just wanted to see if I could do it and I've just decided just I don't need it right now. So I enjoy doing these and I have been doing the matching with the flange really working but it just seems like they're always doing that no matter how much I try. They're always doing that and I thought why am I fighting it? It adds, I do like that it gives it a little extra dimension and I will give you the dimensions of that flange but um, I can do a pretty zipper on top whatever color I want and I don't need that flange. Um, and then the other thing is I was cleaning out the garage and I found some of the fabric that I did not give away that was what I would call the lower quality fabric. Um, but I thought project bags, project bags, this would be perfect. So all three of these project bags that I made recently had this fabric in there because I thought it's so beautiful. It doesn't need to be an heirloom quilt. It's just a project bag. So, you know, it's great. I do not need to buy more fabric though. So it's like, um, otherwise I would go buy more. So, and then I was thinking about something else. I was probably watching a video and I went to cut and it was, I didn't cut it wide enough and I didn't have a big piece of fabric and I thought, well, it is going to have a seam, but you really, it doesn't matter. It is there. Um, so, so those are, those are about the sizes. I'm going to share, I'm going to keep sharing about the details of what I like to put in there, but I wanted to show you just how fun this guy, I was going to do it in a bigger bag and I totally forgot about it as I was making it. So this is my smaller cross stitch one, but this was for wool. This was my wool along friends video. I share about this in the wool along friends. So this is wool, but I just wanted to make it into a project bag because I have so much stuff up on the wall and we do more minimalist decorating in the front room in the kitchen and so I'm trying to think I'm wanting my projects to be used in everyday things and that's what Jen Stitching Simply um, shares a lot about too because she's going to be downsizing. We may be downsizing too in the future and so I want to just have projects in lots of different ways so project bags perfect to be able to use stuff. See so here is that um, fabric that I would have been snooty about using in a quilt but I'm using it everywhere so it's just a beautiful piece of fabric now it's almost gone um, and then I'll leave this one out because I'm going to show you about the stiffness here's one this was just using up these were orphan blocks from my mom I made this according to what size this was and so but it is very you see the flange on this one is very pretty so these are orphan blocks from my mom fabric from my mom and this was like this piece was just big enough and there was an edge that was nicked and I stitched it up just because I wanted that for for that and what do I have I even have something different that was mine that I had given to mom that she gave back to me so um, fabric so that was house of fabrics fabric back from the 80s 90s so project bags you can do them in whatever size you want now the other thing okay so I shared about this too um, in the sense that more wild so this was from my mom my dad um, dad was a fly fisher my brother's a fly fisher my brother-in-law and sister do fly fishing too so fly fishing is part of our family my husband does regular real fishing um, but this was a piece from my mom fat quarters work great for this um, so I ran out there but I wanted this nice and wide there because I love it um, so that's the fun thing about these project bags is really being able to showcase a beautiful piece of fabric because when I do quilts I do very scrappy I have one quilt where there's really only four fabrics in it and it bores me I keep it um, but it bores me. I love looking at lots and lots of fabrics, but project bags, 
that is a great way to showcase a particular fabric, especially one that's kind of what I would call more wild or it's called a focal fabric. All right, here's something else too. This is a, another um, orphan block of my mother's. This one she did, I think it's called a reverse applique, um, where instead of putting a piece of fabric on the front, you put it behind. I can't remember if that's what you, it's called. Just an orphan block of my mom's sweet. She loved pink and she loved gingham and she loved flowers. And I thought, well, what can I do with this? It is going to become a project bag. And it's pretty much, it's not a whole lot different. Cause I was thinking, um, I didn't want to, I was going to put it something on the side to make it as wide as I usually would. And I thought, no, nope, I don't want it to do that. So it's not going to be much narrower than one of my big um, quilt bags. So that's going to be fun. And I need to look, that's why I need to get in my closet to look through my stash. I'm hoping mom, because I, I inherited, I think, all of her plaids because my sister had a lot because they shared them. I'm hoping either this fabric or this fabric is in my stash. But I love this for the backing. So um, this is going to be a project bag and I already, I didn't have a whole lot of zippers left in the colors that I would want. So before I order more, I thought, oh, bingo, we got that. So that's how you can do your project bags, either from a, a size that someone has given you or you work with what you've got and make that. So um, now um, I wanna share with you about the construction and only in the sense of the, the things that I have chosen. It's hot and sweaty in here. <laughs> the um, I've got a fan on me and it's hot, so I'm glistening. Is that what they used to call it back in the old days, glistening? Um, and the sun is shining in now. So the, a lot of people use SF 101, SF 101. So this was what I had gone to purchase again. And I think I shared in my last floss tube, I'm seeing the prices increase in different places. So I had a receipt where I had, it was like $4.99 a yard. And then I went to rebuy it and it was $6.99 a yard. And I thought, nope, not going to do it. Um, I, did, I just get an attitude about things. Whether or not I could afford it, it's like, I refuse to pay those higher prices. So I thought, I'll find it better somewhere else. So I looked at Hobby Lobby, and then I just searched it. I just searched, I think, the best price for whatever, um, SF101. And Walmart.com came up. And I do like to shop small, but I was going to buy it at a big box store anyway. So Walmart had it it broke down to $3.20 a yard. So um, I ended up buying to get free shipping. Uh, the, it came by 10 yards. So this whole thing, 32 bucks. So to get free shipping, I just ordered two because I use a lot of this and I'll explain why I go through so much. Um, but I use a lot of it and I thought, oh, inflation is coming and I'm stocking up. I'm preparing for emergencies. So <laughs> I got two of these, but they're nice and handy here. This is, this is the woven interface. I'm dripping now with sweat, guys. Um, this is how dedicated I am to you. And my husband and I are gonna barbecue as soon as I'm done. Ground beef, whoa, through the roof. I found it in my freezer. High quality stuff too. So we are gonna be barbecuing tonight. And he's waiting for me to finish these up. So don't feel sorry for me. Don't feel sorry for him. He's been in there snacking. I just saw him. Um, what was I going to say? Riley wants to do something. Let me let Riley out. Oh, you're probably too hot in here, baby. Okay. And I could leave the door open, but I get so embarrassed. Like if my husband was going to walk by, I get embarrassed having people watch me do this because like nobody sees me doing this. So of course you guys aren't there and the other people that watch it aren't there, but oh, it's hot and sweaty. Okay. So, okay. Here we go. Now, um, let's see. Focus, girl. Focus. Okay. So let's explain about the construction. I'm going to put the measurements in the show notes. The construction. I came up with something because I was testing. So this is a bag. I love this fabric. I love the flange. I love the inside. But um, it's floppy right it has my hoops in there so that's fine 
but it's floppy. And after I made this, because this was only using this interfacing, we'll just call this the woven, it is, it is fusible, it's a fusible interfacing. So this was only using the fusible interfacing. I'm trying to feel, did I do that on both sides? I think I only did the fusible interfacing on the exterior. And I may have done it on the lining too, but it doesn't feel like it. It's floppier, not what I wanted. Remember, I want stiff. I want that. I don't want it flopping around in my baskets. So um, that's where I realized. Nope, I want to use the fusible interfacing and the fusible fleece. So what I have come up with, and in the show notes, when you see the measurements, you will see the measurements in there also of both the fleece and the, the SF, the interfacing. So what I have come up with is I cut four pieces of the, that's why I'm going through so much of it. I cut four pieces of this for each item that I'm making. And I, I cut it a half inch, at least a half inch narrower because I don't want it in that quarter inch seam that I do. So that's why you'll see the measurements are different. So when I am assembling it, let's use this as an example. When I am assembling it, I will be ironing on one piece of that interfacing to the wrong side of my piece. So this is going to be the front exterior. One piece of the... the it's been an hour and a half, almost two hours now that I have a video going. So I will, I will on this piece, let's just do it this way. This is why I don't do tutorials. My brain doesn't work this way. On this exterior piece, I will iron on one piece of the SF 101, the interfacing. Then a little bit smaller piece, cause it's thicker. I will then, there's a lot of ironing, iron on top of that, the, fusible fleece. So this piece, that's why there's stiffness. There is stiffness to this and I like it. It keeps its form. It keeps its shape. It's like a girdle. So on here, there will be three layers. Hopefully this makes sense. So there will be three layers on there. So I already said it. I'm not going to keep saying it. The same thing with the exterior piece. So when I cut this for the exterior, I will first iron on that one layer of the interfacing. Then once I feel that's adhered well, and so I'm watching floss tube when I'm doing this because it takes forever. Then I adhere a little bit smaller piece of that fusible fleece and you got to work at it because I'll get it positioned and then I iron it from the side where not the back of the fleece because the glue, I will do it on the side where the glue is. So I will iron it from the side that has that glue on it. And I iron and iron and iron and iron it and I'll test it, I'll peel it up, I'll make sure it does not peel up. So that front and back exterior is three, th I was gonna say, is that three? Three layers. Then the lining pieces, I don't have the lining to show you. The lining pieces are only the interfacing. So that's why I go through so much of that interfacing but it gives me that stability. I need stability in my life, guys. It gives me that stability where there is interfacing here. There is interfacing and fleece there. So that's, that is a lot of stuff and I try to make them smaller so it does not go in the seam and give a thickness. I like the, I like this. I don't, I don't want to mess with too many thicknesses in that seam. So that's how I do that. And that's why they are stiff, but they're not, they're nice. To me, it's a nice stiffness, but that does add to the cost and it adds, but it adds to the structure. Cause again, I was not liking those vinyl ones because they bent over. It gives me structure in my life. Um, it's about the only place I've got it. So that's why then when I open it up, it's not floppy. It's nice and firm. Now, the next ones that I'm going to do, so I did like matching things up. I'm going to try the next ones without a flange. I'm just going to save myself that trouble and use a zipper. See, the zipper is just about the same color. And I'm going to do a wider tab. I was trying to go smaller on my little tiny little tabs thinking that was a problem. That's not. So I'm going to go back to what she recommends. 
on the tab and so when I give you the measurements for the tab it's what she's recommending because I'm, I'm not going to give you this little tiny little guy so when I also so as I'm doing this I'm following the layers of the directions that Anila is telling me in that stitched book and I am I am basting if you guys go to do the flange baste it on so it doesn't come loose take that time with the zipper be very careful about that I'm going very very slow I can st I can sew fast because I've sewn forever but I am taking that time to do it slow and precise and before I assemble it I make sure that that zipper is not getting caught and if it is I will redo it and one of these I had to redo that zipper portion the other thing that I like doing is the top stitch that also just helps keep the it keeps the fabric away from the zipper as you're doing that so that's the story and I don't do the box bottom see this is not a box bottom not a curved bottom boom over then the other thing that I've shared about this tool very very helpful um, this is what uh, a lot of quilters or sewers would use this is a very helpful tool I have no idea what it's called I did get it at Joann's um, but this tool it can get that point and it has the curve you got to be careful not jamming that not jamming that corner because you can go right through there so um, and I do trim carefully Elizabeth Ann can stitch did a great tutorial she was showing on a bag how she does her style of bags and she did make a mistake in that corner which I think is great only in the sense that she showed how to fix that how because we all make mistakes how to fix that correction how to fix that mistake one last thing since I still have this out I'm playing with a lot of different project bags because I'm really enjoying them now and I am finding that I now want to get a lighter uh, uh, not as heavy of a gauge of vinyl so because this is another bag that I made this is where I'm going to show this is stuff that I'm going to share that I purchased haul for my quilting video but this is a, a project bag that I made that I'm not entirely happy with um, I do like where there's fabric on the bottom. I really like to be able to see what's in there. But this vinyl, this 16 gauge vinyl, it's too thick. And so I'm going to figure out how to make this. Um, and this thing that I'll show, that's, that's for another one. It does, it does do the zipper. Um, it works. It's very stiff. It has structure, but um, I'm just gonna try it different. Try some different things. And since it's down here, this is this this stuff I'll talk about in a quilting video this is a bag I got from somewhere I don't know if I got it from my mom or someone else shared I did not buy this but I love it um, because obviously you can see everything inside of it but it is a thinner what's nice about this it's not as heavy of a gauge of vinyl and it cooperates more without that stiffness so stiffness good bad whatever I love that this has hinges so hinges handles so that's that's my story guys on my project bags and how I make them why I like what I do um, and I know that this was very long but that's how I kind of do these these videos just showing you why I like something explaining what works and didn't work and why I'm picky about a certain thing so there you go guys um, even though I had just done a floss tube and shared I shared at the end of that floss tube about why I've been kind of absent and what's going on in my life right now in a small way, um, sharing it with you. And then I did a longer um, devotional at the end. So this is where I call the good stuff, where I share about my faith in action. And I just wanted to share, because I always like to leave you with something at the end. So um, I had shared about my life got complicated and I'm, I'm helping a loved one with things um, just to help support that person and I'm, I'm keeping that private but in that I've really been trained praying for wisdom for strength to be able to let go and try not to worry when I could it could take me down and and worry could could make it so I can't function and work and um, I was talking to somebody that I'm in this involved in this with and just explaining to her 
this is this is how in my faith and with my Christianity this is how I do this tough situation and so we prayed together on the phone and I just prayed that God would go before this person protect them because I said I have to release it and so that's where I shared about in the last video about putting something in God's hands just prayed all about this tough situation and then the other things that I've been doing because I think a lot I drive a lot with my job and I have time to think and I've lately don't even want to listen to music um, just thinking and praying and turning those worries into prayer and a lot of the Bible verses that I've memorized all my life um, come back to me in bits and pieces and so I'll think about those and I'll pray and but those the truth just comes back to me and so this is this is kind of the framework of some of my days and how I'm how I'm uh, managing this this part of my life right now but this is in Philippians um, 4 much of Philippians 4 will be very familiar to people um, so I'm just going to read some verses as I go through not necessarily the whole chapter but this chunk is is very important to me and this is how I've been doing this because we know we all know there is a lot of stuff going on in our world um, in many many different layers of things going on in our world and will be will be who knows the end of where this stuff will end but there's a lot of stuff so I've got lots of different areas of concern in my life and so this is how I'm doing it um, so it starts out this is I've shared this verse before therefore my beloved and longed for brethren my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord beloved I've shared in another video about why that's so special to me and then down to, to verse number four this is high this is underlined starred it's it's marked up because this this I have this memorized but I'm gonna read it rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice let your gentleness be known to all men the Lord is at hand that's huge for me right now as I'm working through this with other people I want the joy and the peace and the hope that I have in the Lord to shine through this situation and it's sometimes it's very hard because I don't feel that peace um, but that's very special to me be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving that's the hard part let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus I've shared before about how during what I call a nervous breakdown that I had at the end of 1999 beginning of 2000 had a bit of a breakdown and that was huge guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus so I just asked him to protect my mind at that time and then the things that we can think about so a lot of times I do not want to watch TV um, as my husband's choosing to watch TV and I'll go through the room and sometimes I watch it sometimes I don't um, but this is what I really try to work on finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me that's Paul talking these do and the Lord uh, and the God of peace will be with you other people are watching us other people are watching me and I have to I, I want to live my life that if people would watch me that I could say that too and boy that's a stretch sometimes um, but that's a goal um, and then so much but I did this just there's so much here but I rejoiced in the but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again though you surely did care but you lacked opportunity not that I speak in regard to need for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need those are hard 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 that's a hard concept um, this is where the verse comes I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me 
there that that paragraph needs to go together that we need to learn like Paul did how to go without or how to have how to go through hardship or suffering or how to go through peace but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us um, and then the, so much I was thinking about how tired I am some days in doing these things that I've been doing and these are the I know these verses because I've been praying them that I'm poured out as a drink offering um, so it says things from you a sweet smelling aroma an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to God and my God shall shall, shall shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever amen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen so so many of those verses that's all bits and pieces from Philippians 4 so many of those verses are memorized for me and so many of those verses I will put into prayer I'll put into thought but this is how I am doing life right now and how I am still functional even though I very very much struggle with anxiety and depression and then I shared how I had a bit of a health downturn um, last weekend but um, how I am doing all these things I'm just asking God to strengthen me and when I feel exhausted that I would not be doing it in my own strength but I could pour myself out as a drink offering to the Lord honoring people that I love um, and trying to help them and support them so there we go guys God bless you may you and may I choose joy nevertheless thank you guys